Is the new Marvel Legends X-Men 97 Wolverine the best basic Wolverine Hasbro's ever made? Stick around, bub, and find out. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Starting off with the packaging, and similar to the new Spider-Man figures, this line's been given its own unique blister card. In one corner is the X-Men 97 logo, and in the other corner we get a taste for how the characters look in the show. That pic of Wolverine's been expanded on the side, flipping them around we can see the figure and a colorful assortment of other characters in the wave. This includes Magneto, Storm and Rogue, and Gambit and Bishop. Also, for those trying to find them in store, here's the UPC. I'll level with you, I've got some mixed feelings about the blister cards. As a Positive, I do like that it shows you not only what the character is supposed to look like, but also what the figure is supposed to look like. It's bright and colorful, and obviously scratches my nostalgia itch. As for my concerns, I'll address those later in the video. For now, and for packaging, Wolverine gets one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and the diminutive mutant stands at five and a half inches. This is the first single carded tiger stripe Wolverine we've gotten since the apocalypse wave. Some things like the torso, belt, and shoulder pads are reused. Other things are new. For example, Logan has an all-new head sculpt. Though not quite as cartoonish as other figures in the wave, there is a very stylized nature to his hairstyle. He's also got some eyebrows that Spock would be proud of. I love the sculpt and how crisply the details have been printed on, though there's a certain oranginess to his skin tone that's going to really work against this later when it comes to head swaps. On the subject of skin, Wolverine finally has pinless bare arms. Emphasis on bare. A famously her suit hero the hair has been sculpted on. If Hasbro is going to do this, I kind of wish they would have added some paint detail. To my eye anyway, it looks less like hair and more like road rash. One thing you might have noticed is that while the shoulder pads are reused, the blue is new. It's a lighter, more true blue that doesn't really match any of the other X-Men figures we've ever gotten. We'll be looking at more comparisons later, of course, but for now at least the yellows are pretty consistent. One thing that's new almost every time with Wolverine are his claws. This time, the claws and ports are one solid piece attached to the hand instead of the claws being separate. As such, they're a lot straighter than usual. They're also grayer than usual, but I guess that's probably to do with the cartoon. From an action figure engineering standpoint, I do like these, but they are going to pose a challenge to those of you who like to customize with real blades like with can of beams. Another new addition this time is that the bottom of his trunks have been sculpted onto the upper leg. I never exactly felt that was something missing from previous figures, but the gap does seem less obvious, and it also did require some extra paint detailing, so there is that. Most importantly, Logan's knees are painless. With 2024 being Wolverine's 50th anniversary, I predict we're going to be seeing a lot more of this body updating his various looks from throughout the years. For presentation, I'm giving this Wolverine one whole point. Moving on to posability, and if you've ever owned any Hasbro Wolverine, you know what to expect, but it's still worth going over. From the top and Logan's heads and a ball joint and a disc hinge, you can look up this high, this far down, not really a tilt so much as a wobble, but all the way around. Moving on down, he's got swivel hinge shoulders that raise this high, butterfly joints that move forward and back, and technically the shoulder pads are posable. Traveling down is hairy arms and Wolverine has bicep swivel, again pinless double jointed elbows, and swivel hinge wrists. Shifting to the torso, and Wolverine has an ab crunch and a waist swivel. He can only arch back this far, which admittedly isn't great, but he can hunch forward this far which is incredible. No tilt, of course, but he can twist. Below the X-Belt and Wolverine has ball-jointed hips. He can kick 90 degrees and do a perfect split. He also has thigh cut, again, painless double-jointed knees, boot cut rotation, and ankles that can hinge and pivot. For posability, Wolverine gets one whole point. Moving on to playability, and this Logan comes with four accessories. For example, he has this piece for when he's not wearing his mask, Wait a minute, was I supposed to have that on him all along? Ah, well, I've got it on him now, and honestly it looks pretty good. A little bit gappy if I'm being honest. This is reuse, by the way, of an accessory that's been coming with Wolverine all the way back to the first retro card version. Logan also has alternate fists with the claws retracted. Obviously these are reused too. And the thing you've been waiting the entire video to see, the masked head. Just look at those two sideways Batmans kissing. Admittedly, the ears might be a bit big for some people, but I dig it. 
also the little bit of stubble is a nice touch. Now this is a wolverine. He's the best there is at what he does, but how well does this wolverine play with others? First up, we've got to start with the leader and founder of the X-Men, Charles Francis Xavier. Professional Xavier, if you read the box he came in. For the field leader of the X-Men, and here's a couple of Cyclopses, I'm expecting he'll be popping up in X-Men 97 Series 2 with that new updated VHS body. For that crush, he just can't let go of, however, and here we have Jean Grey. I'm expecting we'll be seeing her in Series 2 as well. Crushes aside, for Wolverine's real one true pairing, at least according to my headcanon, and here we have a couple of versions of Storm. For the real blue team, and here we have Beast, I'm also expecting him to be in Series 2. For Logan's favorite elf, and here's Nightcrawler, and the retro card Dazzler. I included her because their blues are honestly a pretty close match. For a couple of other important teammates though, and here we have Psylocke, way overdue for an updated version of her. For all of Wolverine's fastball special needs, and here's Colossus, but for his fangirls, and here we have Kitty Pride, Jubilation Lee, and Deadpool. Veering over to some villains, and here we have the Family Matters 3-pack Magneto, Mr. Sinister, the Bone Breaker Build-A-Figure, the Wolverine 5-pack Cyber, the Marvel Legends Animated Series-style Retro Card Apocalypse, and the Marvel Select Sabretooth. For a relative scale comparison, here's Wolverine with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. If only I had a Wolverine Buster armor, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Uh, of course, if you were waiting for me to show you this masthead, the thing you were probably waiting even more to see are some head swaps. First up, and least ways in my collection, here we have the brown and orange retro card. Sculpt wise, the new head on this body looks great, just keep in mind that the skin tones don't match. On the flip side, the skin tones don't match here either, and if we're being honest, this head sculpt is pretty dated. Next up, and here's the first appearance 80 years Wolverine. If you wanted to swap the heads to make a more updated version of the first appearance, this fits great, and the yellows are a very close match. That being the case, you could also do this if you wanted to. Not altogether sure why, but again, you could. As for the other head, and like I'll no doubt be saying throughout this entire section, the skin tones don't match, but strictly speaking, the head does fit. For the Wolverine, it's been my go-to, and here we have the Love Triangle 3-pack. As long as you're okay with the whole skin tone thing, this fits very well and is a pretty close yellow. This swap also benefits from an alternate battle damaged head. Logan's definitely seen some better days here. There's also an alternate unmasked head, but just like Retro Card, I do think it's kind of a downgrade. Popping the new unmasked head on the Love Triangle 3 body, and you can see what I mean. Skin tone aside, this is a much better sculpt. And then here's the new masked head. Here we have Weapon X from Age of Apocalypse. I'm going to assume that none of you are really all that interested in seeing this, but a few of you might be interested in this. Definitely a bit more subdued, but... Why would you want that? For another skin tone matching nightmare, and here we have the five pack version. This way around, it's actually not too bad and adds a lot of personality, especially this screaming head. Other way around though, and once again, it does stick out. Also, I'd like to take this moment to contend that this is the only time that Wolverine's body hair has ever actually worked in action figure form. Here we have House of X. Just to let you know, I don't have the one with the red hot claws. I'm just waiting for them to reissue it as Astonishing X-Men. As for this though, it's not too bad. Lastly, for my collection, and here's the training uniform from X-Men 275. As nice as the new one is, this is my favorite Hasbro Wolverine head, and I'm pretty happy with it on this body. I particularly prefer this angry, snarly look. Other way around, and since there's no other skin showing, this one's absolutely fine. Honestly, it's probably the best swap for this head so far. With multiple accessories, head swap potential, and the ability to work in both animated and comic book shelves, for playability, I'm giving this Wolverine one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left left to discuss but the price, and we're gonna have to revisit that packaging. In Hasbro's defense, they've been doing blister card style X-Men assortments for years, but it's also hard not to worry that Hasbro is using these to transition away from Build-A-Figures while charging the same price. At $25 a pop, those blisters can feel pretty empty. I bring it up because these aren't retro style trying to capitalize on nostalgia, they're just blister cards. On the other hand, I'm conflicted because no Build-A-Figure means I'm not stuck buying the figures I don't don't want. That was a huge issue I had earlier this year with the Chod Wave. I didn't even bother to review half of them. I'm passing on most of this assortment, so as far as Wolverine's concerned, I do feel like I got my money's worth. Even so, for price, I'm giving Wolverine half a point for a still very admirable total of 4.5 out of 5. I might be passing on most of the wave, but I did pick up Magneto. The Master of Magnetism is, however, a conversation for another day.
If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.